Hello, my fellow freedom builders, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to look at how to find some more candidates in this current market that is a bit confusing to look at. And um, I do apologize for the delay in video. I would have made one or two more this week. But as I mentioned last time, the uh, whole situation with the uh, kids going home from school because the shutdown has been uh, a bit uh, interrupting to say the least but I think I have I'm getting a good setup now where I can do my two three maybe four videos per week as usual so let's get to it um, as you know if you know just a bit about the market let's just have a quick look here at the overall market and uh, we we'll, can take a look at the S&P 500 here in the the ETF SPY and uh, as you know, of course, if you have stocks um, or are just a bit interested in this stuff, uh, we had this big crash and then we had this uh, turn up in the market. And now it is a bit um, of a, yeah, the big question is, is this the beginning of a, an upward movement so that we'll see a, a little fall back here and then a move up? Or is this simple, simply what we could uh, suspect is some sort of a bear flag where if we break this one to the downside we are gonna see some more pain uh, that is a good question and I don't have the answer for you here but uh, let's have a look at some of the stocks that could be potential candidates in your portfolio in the upcoming times I'm not telling you to buy these stocks I'm not telling you to buy them now uh, I'm not giving you financial advice but I'm trying to show you some of the methods and strategies I'm using and in my last video I um, I took some time explaining how I used my screener I'm using this fast graph here um, and um, many of you have asked me which version I'm using there's a version I think it is around $15 per month and one at around $40 per month I think and I do have the uh, extended version I'm not affiliated with fast graph but it is a nice tool and um, I'm using the the last one because I like making different portfolios and there's a bit more tools here but many of you could easily do with the with a cheap version to $15 but I am scanning for stocks with a A minus rating so on so on I uh, did I went through all of these settings in my first video so you can see that one I'm linking that uh, to that one below here um, but let me go through some of the, the the stocks that pops up on the list there's a 22 in the US market that pops up here and, and go uh, and fulfill my criteria here and uh, today I am going to look at the, some of the fundamentals but I'm also going to explain a bit about the technical part or uh, the technical side because I'm not just a fundamental investor I'm also a technical investor trying to well you could say time the market um, my Danish website and YouTube channel is called market time with DK and that was a bit um, a bit too to provoke these people saying that it is simply impossible to time the market but we can get back to that later right now then um, we had these first five last time uh, ending up with anthem and uh, i think that the next one on uh, the list was the booking holdings if we are looking at the booking holdings here let's just have a look at it we can see yes here it is sorry for the, the delay here we can see that uh, over the last 12 years, uh, it has been growing quite nicely and been um, having a, a P around 20, 21, 22 here. Um, and it has oscillated nicely around both the, the, the P and, and the growth um, lines here. Uh, the black one is the price. And you can see that every time it has been down in the cheap territory, there's been uh, potential good profits up um taking it up of course we can never get out exactly at the top even though we do like to try and, and time the market but right now it is an extremely cheap territory and of course we should be careful um confusing uh, or mixing up the terms cheap with the with the term value cheap and value uh, they are two complete different worlds but of course if the price drops and there's still some great earnings to be seen then of course it can be a good value play and um, as you can see they have estimated a drop here in um, let's just see here um, in, in uh, 2020 uh, in the earnings and um, if you don't know the, the booking uh, holdings here you can see the quality is, is quite okay 
but if we see the description what they actually do is a prov uh, it is a provider of travel and restaurant online reservation and related services and if you have been just paying a little bit attention to the media lately you do know that travel and restaurants and hotels are pretty much the the worst hit and uh, niche or sector uh, overall in the entire world right now so I suspect that they, um, the Stokopedia here, I haven't, uh, I, I can't see when they have updated the uh, their estimates, but um, there's no doubt that this entire situation should be uh, taken into account. I would not buy a company like uh, Holdings.com before we saw some more clarity in the entire situation right now. If we are looking um, at the charts here, and as you can see, those of you, let's just see here, holdings, booking holdings, of course, because I, here it is. Um, those of you that have been following me before, or seen some of the videos about my strategies, you know that I use a, a weekly chart that is my main chart to invest from uh, because it filters out a lot of the noise. If we're looking at a daily chart, there's a lot of ups and downs and you can easily get emotional here. But um we can learn a bit from this as you can see down here we have the rsi and we have this one called the crs i have made a video about that but that is where we compare this uh price uh development uh compare it to the s p 500 now that it is a u.s stock and uh, what we can see is that when the rsi goes below 50 and the the CRS uh, is going below its two uh, moving averages here. We are getting our first sell signal here in November 19. Um, and of course, there was no virus going around there, not, at least not in, in the Western world, and nobody really was really concerned about this. Um, but then we got another one. If we hadn't gotten out there, we would have gotten out around here, around 1800. Um, before it dropped 33% um, or something like that. Um, if we are looking at the daily chart, we can see something that technical analysis that I am also uh, both fundamental and technical. What we're seeing is that a downtrend starts with a movement up, movement down, movement up, and then we make a lower high meaning that the buyers are not in control anymore and when we break below this point it is a very clear sign that we should get out no real technical anal uh, analyst would would stick with this stock when it broke below this one after having made uh, a new lower uh, top i'm pretty sure about that so now when should we get into this um well if they can fulfill their estimates uh in in the earnings what I would wait for was some sort of bottoming, uh, bottoming out here like this. And of course, that means that I'll, I'll never get in right at the bottom. That's simply not possible, not in my strategy, uh, at least. So often I get in maybe 20 or 30 percent up from the bottom, but I don't really care because my method is always keeping me out of these large, large drops here that we have seen. And nobody knows if this drop is over. It can easily go on for 10 or 20 or 30% more down, or we could turn right straight up and go 100% up. Nobody knows. What I'm looking at is the charts and what they're telling me. And I do like the strong fundamental stocks with good value, but then I want it to, to make some good, uh, starting some good uptrend before I buy it. Okay, let's move uh, quickly further on here. The next one is one I have made a, a video about uh, not too long ago, and that is Bristol Myers, BMY here. And if we take a look at that one, yes, here it comes. Um, BMY here is in the uh, pharmaceutical, in the, in the healthcare uh, sector, and um, they are not really in danger as, uh, as we saw the, the, the bookings before because uh, the, this sector, of course, they can have lower earnings, but uh, this sector is a bit more uh, resilient uh, when it comes to crashes like this, because people still need their um, medication, their drugs, and so on. And what we can see here is that um, Bristol Myers 
have uh, taken a beating actually since 2015 and I was explaining that in my uh, video about BMY you can find that in, in the channel under stock of the week I think it's under that playlist and you can see it has been going up a bit down here but if it can keep its estimates and they are fulfilled then we are seeing some very good potentials here in the Bristol Myers uh, stock and um, if we just take a quick look here at the BMY here Let's just see. They're not showing the best quality here and actually it has dropped 18 points over the last uh, 30 days. So that was definitely something I would look into. Uh, no doubt about that. They do have a peg ratio at point two. Uh, the peg ratio is the current PE ratio divided by the estimate uh, growth in earnings per share uh, for the next year. And uh, that tells us something about if we are paying too much for future growth. And here, Point two is actually very decent and they have our earnings per share uh, growth estimated um, or 12 month forecast rolling at almost 100% here. Dividend yield above 3%, that is okay. Uh, operating margins are huge, um, that is very good. They have growing uh, earnings per share, they have the um, they're paying out, as I said, around 3% in dividend. What I don't like here, and that is for 2019, they, it seems like uh, if, if the estimates are holding up, then that is going to be a lot better. But the dividend cover uh, was in, in 2019 only 1.22. And as you know, what I am looking for in stocks, especially right now, where they are going to be uh, there are going to be some pressure on the uh, on the liquidity on the cash flow of the companies even some of the very uh, solid and unstable companies if they are not seeing uh, a lot of cash flow is their liquidity become uh, comes under pressure then they can get in really really deep trouble we saw it at uh, I thought I think it was Boeing that has been paying out something like 94 96 percent of their uh, liquidity of, of their cash. They have been paying that out in dividends. Of course, to please the shareholders, I completely get that. But in my opinion, a good solid company and a, a, well, a well managed company, the CEO of the company is getting his or her money to make sure that the company is also bolstered uh, and, and has some buffer capital when it comes to, to a downturn in the economy. But way too many companies, in my opinion, have simply over the last 10 years squandered the entire bull market away and the entire uh, economic cycle it has been up, up, up. And we they have been able to, to borrow money at around zero in interest. And that has simply, um, they, they, they've gotten too used to having free money available, in my opinion. So um, what we can see here is 1.22 is a bit to the low side. Uh, and I'm not sure if they have adjusted for the current situations, but uh, around three, between three or four here is absolutely acceptable. Um, they do have a lot of debt and I'm, I cover that in, in the, the uh, Bristol Myers video as well, because that is one of the points that I'm actually not too uh, keen on. I, I do not like companies with such a huge debt, but uh, they have been buying some good stuff with it, in my opinion. And we can see that the interest cover is around 100. So um, that is fair enough. But I do know that some of you are not too fond of the uh, Bristol Myers simply uh, because of the uh, huge, huge costs they have had here. But we can see that the analyst consensus is quite well. And if we are looking at uh, the graph here, the BMY, here it comes. We can see that it has had a big drop as well. And that is also, uh, it has been hit with these just around the same as the market, actually a, a bit above uh, 30%. And then we are seeing this great uptrend right now. This is actually something that technical analysis do like. It is a, a what you call a, a bullish engulfing pattern. Um, maybe I'll make a, a little video about that. But what we do see here, uh, is something that I'm a bit concerned of um, when I look at this uh, stock in, in with technical glasses on. And that is uh, we have this uh, falling tops and this seems like the beginning of a new top. So what I'm also seeing is that we have this drop, a bit of an upturn, then a drop down. And 
a lot of these investors that didn't get out and that is something that when people are criticizing technical analysis a lot of times it's because they don't really get what it actually tells us because technical analysis is not some sort of magic formula you just buy when an indicator do that or when a price action shows you something it is important to understand what actually creates these different patterns and some of what creates a new top funny enough uh, right at uh, the former bottom here is that a lot of the investors that were uh, in the stock here and didn't get an exit they simply didn't get out and they have been sitting here and beating their head against the wall saying oh no I didn't get, get uh, out and uh, my bonus is gone now or my wife is killing me or whatever they're saying and then what they're saying and I bet that you have said that to yourself at one point saying if I can just get it up around here when I, when I thought about getting out, then I'll definitely sell. And then lo and behold, it's getting up here. And right now, a lot of investors are sitting and wondering, well, this upturn, has it just been what is called a, a debt cap bounce? Um, is it just a, a little bounce up from a, from a bottom before we're going down again? And a lot of the investors have been taking so much pain in this downturn that they are more than willing to sell now where they can actually see that the stock has gotten up here um, something around 20% from the bottom and they are more than willing to take that. Uh, in our weekly chart here we can see that it actually never went into what we call a, a, a red zone. It, it only went into a yellow zone uh, around here but on the daily chart in the current uh, market regime, I would definitely have sold it uh, if I had had it uh, here. So, um, but I can talk a lot about the technicals here. Uh, let's just move on to see more exciting stocks. We have the Sigma here. And if we're looking at that one, you can see that Sigma is also uh, a stock that, at least in the estimates, are, are having some some great growth in the future here. Again, I should not be the one to tell you uh, to look out, especially in this regime, because uh, right now we simply do not know the ripple effects out in the market. So some really strange sectors are getting hit right now where I was sitting and thinking, wow, I hadn't seen that one coming, but of course, ripple effects from hotels, travels, uh, all sorts of different insurance and so on and so forth. Um, so right now I'm just sitting a bit tied and watching, but this is definitely one of the interesting stocks here. Uh, it has been moving great around uh, the lines here. And right now we are way below and there could easily be some upturn here if the estimates uh, are being kept and we are seeing uh, almost a 30% per year just because we're starting from a low point. Because even though this is actually a great company, if we had bought it uh, somewhere around here in the very expensive area, then over, what, five or six years or something like that, uh, we had only been making 1% per year, and that is including dividends. They're not large, I, I'll give you that. Um, but uh, that is uh, everything included here, uh, simply because we bought it from a low point. And uh, that is one of the reasons why I have started more and more to combine my technical analysis with um, these fundamental uh, value views here. Um, if we are looking here, Sigma, let's have a look. Then it is uh, a fairly okay company here, 60. I do like around 70, but 60 sometimes is okay. The momentum is great, and that is not only price momentum, they're also looking at growth in um, they, they are upgrading estimates and analysts are upgrading and so on. That is a 97, meaning that it is in the top 3% of all the stocks we're looking at here. Um, the stock rank is at 90, that is great. Peak ratio at 0.5, PE ratio at 8.8, .8, very good. Price to free cash flow, 7.4, nothing there. A nice and growing earning per share. Um, the free cash flow is also growing, I do like that one. Uh, they're paying next to nothing in dividend and they're actually cutting that in half. And I'm not sure if that is because of the crisis right now, but I actually do like, and that is of course be, because I'm not a, a pure dividend investor, but I do like to see companies that are, um, that are closing down the dividend programs right now simply to make sure they have the liquidity 
to withstand some some sort of of larger crisis. Uh, I have seen several very angry posts on Facebook saying, how dare this and that company that I had invested in, how dare they cut the dividends and now I bought it and I'm down 30% and I could see that they're making 8% in dividends and I could make the 30% back in let's say four years, but now it has cut it completely away and what do I do? Um, And then all sorts of cursing and swearing. And I can simply only say that, and I have said it in several of my videos, there's nothing wrong with being a dividend investor. Just be aware that in critical times, like right now, it is in the the company has their good rights simply to cut the dividends away or the buyback programs or whatever they can think of as a, 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 as a shareholder placing programs. Um, and um, I do also like the dividends, but it has never been the main part of my strategy. So um, there's that. Um, they have been bre- they they had this big spike in in uh, in in their debt and and if you have been following them, uh, you know why I might be making a video only on on Signe here at, at some point. They, what they're doing is, and that is one of the reasons why I'm a bit um, wary about this one now, and I would have to dive deeper into the fundamentals here because what they do is that they are offering. Uh, health insurance. Um, they are worldwide, of course, uh, but what we are seeing right now is that a lot of lot of people might have their insurance at Cigna. I'm not sure if they are the, the ones uh, insuring this, but some of these healthcare insurance companies have insured people, uh, especially in the United States right now, that is going to pay for their stay in a hospital if they have gotten this illness that is spreading all over the world. And um, well, right now, if you just take a quick look at that, you can see that in the United States, there is 265,000 cases of this illness uh, growing like crazy. And uh, that means that companies like this one um, might be, um, they, they, they might be demanded some huge, huge payment here. I have seen numbers from the United States saying somewhere around forty to $50,000 for a stay at a hospital if you've gotten this illness uh, on one, two, three weeks. I don't know how long you're, you're staying there. And that is one of the reasons why I would not touch a company like this one uh, right now. If we're looking at the, the technical part here, the Cigna, uh, you can also see that it actually went into a red zone here and then it went into a red zone here again quite late. But we would have gotten out um, and of course that is easy to say afterwards. Um, but as you can see it started to make a lower top here and in the downturn here I would probably have sold it if I had uh, had it. Uh, and then, of course, you can see the exact same thing as we were looking at just a second ago. Is that we have this bottom here, and right now it seems like it is making a new top right at the former bottom. And we see that again and again and again. And I know that a lot of people say, "Well, this charting is completely a chaotic system. There can be no system in in that." Well, it is funny because I'm seeing this a million times a year. And that is simply because that the people investing and trading, I know that there's a lot of computers involved, but it is still human psychology. The the ones programming the computer or choosing what algorithm should be run are still humans anyway. So um, yeah, this one is not one I would take right now. That is for sure. But uh, I actually do like a lot of the of the structure in the company. But in the current situation, I would definitely not touch it. All right, I had planned for uh, a, a bit more companies today, but uh, someone is talking too much in these videos. I'm not sure who, but I'll try to tell him in the next video that there should be room for at least five or six um, new cases here. So I will try to make one here uh, Saturday, tomorrow and Sunday and Monday. And then I think we should uh, be through all of these uh, 22 different candidates. So. I look forward to uh, talk to you again soon. And if you haven't done already, remember to subscribe, like the video, video, you know, all of that stuff down below. 
and I am linking to uh, former videos to, uh, under the video and also to my favorite tools that I'm using. So that's it for now. Talk to you again soon. Bye.